Right, so let me welcome the next speaker in the beginning of the mini course. So I was curious myself because at breakfast I heard that Pavel wouldn't show up and he didn't know what the TBA should be. But now surprisingly he is here with us and the title is seen simple non holonomic systems on the plane. So Pavel, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I was asked by the organizers of this conference to <laughs> sort of, actually really the organizers of this conference is Omid Makmali and Katja Sagersting. They really made terrific job. They were working like crazy for organizing this conference. So they asked me to give a mini course and I don't know what does it mean mini course. I cannot make a course of anything because I know very simple things only. Fourth building, fourth church. So I'm, I, 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 am, I, am a bit, I am a bit embarrassed because perhaps my talk will be the most elementary talk I've ever heard during the last 10 years. Anyhow, so my, the purpose of this lecture is to give an introduction for studies of geometrics, geometries of mechanical systems obeying non-holonomic constraints. I will not talk about the dynamics of such systems. It turns out that in the non-holonomic regime, already the kinematics is quite interesting. Even in the case of systems consisting of a few points moving on the plane, the zoo of geometric structures appearing on their configuration spaces very quickly becomes fascinating, at least for me. In particular, several simple Lie groups find the realizations as symmetries of such systems, okay? So now let me, let me make some introduction to this, what I want to say. Majority of this, what I want to say, perhaps will be only tomorrow if there will be still people wanting to hear about it. Okay. So in classical mechanics, uh, one models the movement of mechanical system using an n-dimensional manifold, which is interpreted as the configuration space of the system. Its points, correspond to all positions that the system may assume during the, its evolution. The number n corresponds to the number of degrees of freedom of the system. A movement of the system from a given point qi at time ti to a position qf at time tf is modeled in terms of a smooth curve uh, from the interval ti tf to m and the derivative uh, of this curve at point at time t represents the velocity of the system at time t in the point q, q of t on the curve. All possible velocities as tangent to all possible curves at q form the tangent space to m at q. It is an n-dimensional vector space, okay? Another manifold frequently used in classical mechanics to describe mechanical systems is the tangent bundle, whose points are pairs qv, where q is a point in the configuration space and v is a velocity at the tangent space at this point. The tangent bundle represents all possible positions and velocities of the system. It can be visualized an n-dimensional manifold of positions of the system with an n-dimensional vector space of possible velocities uh, attached to every point. We have to decide if the system we want to describe does or does not obey any constraints. There are two different classes of constraints that we have to consider. First, there could be some imposed restrictions on positions, which means that there are some relations between the positions in form of some relation, I have f of q equals zero. Uh, we assume that locally such constraints that define a submanifold of M, which becomes a new lower dimensional configuration space of the constraint system, restricting the movement to the submanifold say n merely diminishes the number n of degrees of freedom and the system can now be described in terms of the new configuration space n and its tangent bundle tn as before. So these are not really interesting constraints. Uh, the second class of constraints we want to discuss is much more interesting. These are the constraints that impose relations on points in the tangent bundle tm to m. In physical terms, these are the constraints that make restrictions on velocities. They can be schematically described by relations of the form where now Q and V are related by some functions or multifunctions. Since the velocities, velocities uh, Vs are related to the positions Qs by taking derivatives, it may happen that the relations H Q of V, these relations on 
positions and velocities can be integrated to uh, relations only on Q. So in other words, it may happen that roughly the velocity position constraints are related to the differential of f of q in such a way that these velocity position constraints are, are, are occurring if and only if these are really the constraints on, on, on positions. These kinds of velocity position constraints we will call integrable ones, are, uh, which we call integrable ones are therefore equivalent to the constraints on positions which we were discussing before. So we will exclude such velocity position constraints from our consideration from now on and we will focus on the velocity position constraints which are not integrable. Such constraints are called non-holonomic. Okay? We note that at each point Q of the configuration space the non-holonomic relations define subsets in the tangent space of Q. In general, these sets are nonlinear subsets. But what? what control. control system. OK. We will focus on the situations when these sets are vector subspaces. So as I said, this, these constraints can be nonlinear. But today, I will only be focusing when, on the situations where these constraints are vector subspaces. This corresponds to the linear constraints on velocities. Furthermore, I will only deal with the regular systems for which the vector subspaces will be such that the dimension k is constant along the configuration space. The configuration space of such systems is equipped with a smooth assignment of k planes to each point q of m. Such an assignment is called rank k distribution on m. Since this distribution is this distribution of all possible velocities of the mechanical system, it is called velocity distribution. It follows that the mechanical system with linear velocity constraints in non-holonomic, if and only if its velocity distribution is integral, it's not integral. It's not integral. So non-holonomic constraints uh, in this linear regime corresponds to non-integrable distribution, right? Uh, we recall that a rank k distribution is integrable if and only if there is a foliation of f, f of m by some manifolds tangent to the k planes of the distribution. The Frobenius theorem states that m is foliated by such submanifolds if and only if the space, which I denote d minus 2, consisting of all commutators of vector fields from d is equal to d. Thus, the mechanical system with configuration space m and velocity distribution is non-holonomic if and only if d is non-trivially contained in this d minus two okay so at each point yes i i i in, in all my talk i will be just assuming that everything is regular so the the the, the ranks are not changing from point to point of all the distributions that i will have so we now show how the the velocity distribution D looks like in the case of a mechanical system, which for obvious reasons I will call a skate on an ice ring, right? So I idealize the skate blade as an interval of a fixed length on the Cartesian plane. I assume that the blade move, moves without skidding, which means that the velocity of the midpoint on the blade is always parallel to the line defined by the direction of the blade. Okay, so it's like on this on this picture. To parameterize the configuration space of the blade, uh, I attach coordinates x, y to its middle point. Then the position of the blade on the plane is totally determined by the numbers x, y, and an angle which the blade direction forms with the ox ox axis, which is perhaps horizontal axis on this on this on this picture. Thus, uh, the configuration space of the skate blade is a Cartesian product of R2 and uh, a circle. And the movement of the velocity unconstrained blade is described in terms of a curve, in which in this uh, coordinates is given by x of t, y of t, and alpha of t. Okay? The velocity constraint of non skidding in this language says that the middle point in the blade. The velocity of the middle point in the blade is parallel to this axis, uh, to this to this direction 
defined by the blade, blade which, which, which in these coordinates looks like this, okay? This last condition says that the velocity of the blade must satisfy, satisfy uh, the following linear relation. Since we have only one scalar constraints on the Vs, then two out of the three velocities components of the system are free. Thus at every point Q, X, Y, alpha, the non-skidding condition distinguishes a two plane of possible, possible velocities, the Q. This can be easily seen to be spanned by vector fields, the partial alpha and cosine alpha partial X plus sine alpha partial Y. So these are the two directions that span this, span this velocity distribution. This defi defines a rank two distribution on M to which every mo movement of the skate blade obeying the non-skidding constraint must be tangent. We now use the Frebenius theorem to show that our skate blade mechanical system is non-holonomic and indeed taking the two vectors uh, from this distribution X1 and X2, uh, we see that the commutator is in totally new direction uh, so the, uh, this distribution D is properly contained in this uh, D minus two distribution, which according to the Frebenius theorem implies that this skate blade mechanical system is, is non-holonomic. So it's a very simple story, right? So now let's pass to something more general. Suppose now that we have a mechanical system with an n-dimensional configuration space and linear velocity constraints. Then we have uh, a rank k smaller than n velocity distribution on M and all movements of the system obeying these constraints are described by curves uh, in M, which are always tangents to the distribution. Such curves are called horizontal with respect to D or horizontal. Now, uh, we encounter the problem of reaching a given configuration by the velocity constraint system. We'll formulate it as follows. Determine if two points Q1, meaning the starting configuration and Q2, the final configuration, are horizontally pass connected. If I can pass from one, one point to the other point, obeying the velocity constraint. So that's the question. And for example, if the velocity distribution is integrable on M, then uh, two points which lie on two different leaves of defoliation defined by D are not horizontally pass connected, right? So simply horizontal movements of points which lie on, on a given leaf being tangent to the leaf will stay at this leaf. In other words, the integrability of the velocity distribution is an obstruction to horizontal pa pass connectivity. Two different leaves are never horizontally pass connected. It follows from this example that to consider linear velocity constraint system that can reach any configuration point starting from any other configuration, the system must be non-holonomic or what is the same, its velocity distribution D should be such that D is contained properly in this D minus two. The question arises if the necessity is sufficient for such re uh, reachability and the answer to this question is given by the Joe Raszewski theorem. I will pass to this in a second. So I need first to introduce this sequence of distributions. So we start with D minus one. So I, I, I'm, I'm defining sequence of distributions D minus something, and D minus one is the starting velocity distribution. And then we define mm, mm, the sequence of these nested distributions, D minus one, D minus two, D minus S, with uh, this that every next D minus S plus one is obtained from D minus S by um, taking all commutators with vectors from D, okay? Uh, note that if this is integrable, then D minus S is equal to D minus one for all S and in such a situation, the above sequence has only one element. Often, however, there exists a zero such that uh, after finite numbers of step, steps, we just end up with the entire tangent, tangent space. If this happens, the distribution is called bracket generating or maximally non-integrable. And now the integer R, which is stays here at this D minus S zero plus one is called the step of the distribution and the sequence of integers uh, of ranks of all of these distributions in the sequence uh, is called the growth vector of the distribution. 
In, the, in particular, the growth vector is carrying information about the rank of D, which is the first entry in this vector, the dimension of M, the last entry in N, and the step, the number of components of N, gives the simplest numerical invariance of the distribution. Note that the above definitions are pointwise, and therefore the growth vector is a vector valued function on M. In what follows, I will, however, consider only situations when the growth vector is locally constant over some open set. If this happens, the distribution is called regular. In our example of the skate blade, we have the distribution is just having crank two, so d minus one is just this span of these uh, vectors that span the distribution. D minus two is already the entire TM because we saw that we created this third vector that, that is at every point linearly independent. And uh, the step of this distribution is two and the growth vector is two three, which shows that the velocity distribution of the skate blade system is a regular step two bracket generating distribution, okay? We are now in a position to state the Chorasheski theorem. So Chorasheski theorem says that if the bracket, if D is bracket generating distribution on a manifold M, then any two points in M can be connected by a horizontal curve. So this is, the converse to this theorem is, is true in the case of analytic distri distributions, but it fails in general. Even if the distribution is smooth, one can see at this, this, this topic in uh, Richard Montgomery's book. Anyhow, in the piecewise smooth category, this theorem gives, gives a sufficient condition for a mechanical system with linear velocity constraints to have the ability to move from any given configuration to any other one. For this, it is enough that the velocity distribution of the system is bracket generated. It turns out that there is also another much stronger theorem giving sufficient conditions for a system to reach any configuration. It combines results of Nagano and Sussman and states the following. So let F uh, be a family of vector fields Xi on a manifold M. Suppose the definite number of brackets of, this, of these Xi's, uh, suppose that a finite number of brackets of these Xi's and a finite number of iterations of this bracket that generate TQM at every point Q of M. We say that the family F is bracket generating in such a situation. Then the orbit of this family of vector fields at each point is all of M. So it is. So let me let me let me say, uh, say more precisely or more colloquially what, what what this theorem says. Here, the term orbit of a family at a point Q means all points in M that can be connected with Q by piecewise smooth segments of integral curves are vector fields Xi from the family. The fact that the orbit of the family F through every point is all of M means that every point Q in M can be reached but such broken integral curves of vector fields regardless of the starting point Q0 of M. So this, 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 is, this is weaker and more useful theorem to, 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 to check if we are in the, in the, in the, in the um, uh, situation that we can uh, connect any point of the configuration space with any other. It is enough to have a family of vectors that 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 have this property as in this and as in this theorem. I want to So I, I didn't know this theorem and I needed precisely the theorem. <laughs> Once I needed precisely the theorem as it stated here and somebody told me and I was very happy that something like this exists. Uh, another generalization of this 
Yeah, but that's essentially what this says, right? Okay, let me go further. An important class of non holonomic distributions is given by contact distributions, and these are rank 2M distributions, D on 2M plus one dimensional manifold, which annihilate a single one form such that its corresponding two form is non degenerate on, on D, which more formally means that given a one form lambda such that this holds on M, a contact distribution is its annihilator. The condition of co being contact makes D bracket generated, generating with D minus two, and the grow, growth vector for this uh, contact distributions is 2M, 2M, 2M plus one. An example of contact distribution given by the velocity distribution of the skate blade considered earlier. <laughs> Indeed, take the one form like here on our skate blade configuration, and clearly we have that this lambda is annihilated by this to vector fields of the distribution. Uh, 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 and also one can check that lambda d lambda is just non-zero at every point. So this, this, this distribution of the skate blade uh, is contact. We mentioned above that the growth vector provides the simplest invariance of a distribution. They are used to distinguish if two distributions are locally equivalent. The precise definition of local equivalence is as follows. Let two, let D1, D2 be two rank K distributions living on two, not necessarily different and dimensional manifolds, M1 and M2. We say that the two distributions are locally equivalent if and only if there exists a local diffeomorphism translate from one manifold to the other, uh, transforming distribution to distribution. In case of a single manifold and a distribution D on it, one considers local diffeomorphisms that preserve D. Uh, that means smooth maps such that uh, transfer of distribution to itself. These local self equivalences are called local symmetries of the distribution. Since, since they can be composed and inverted as maps, they form a group. The set of all local symmetries is the local symmetry group of the distribution. If we have two rank K distributions, D1 and D2 on M, that are integrable, they, then they are always locally equivalent. Moreover, the local symmetry group is infinite dimensional. The same is also true, for example, if one considers two contract, contact distributions on M. They are always locally equivalent and have the local symmetry group of infinite dimension. But such a situation is rare. In general, smooth distributions have no symmetries at all. And two randomly chosen distributions, even regular and with the same growth vector, are locally non-equivalent. If you all, don't all, all horizontal curves to all horizontal curves. Oh, yeah. hmm. Those are some exotic cases. Well, up to exotic cases, it should be so. But I, I never heard this formulation <laughs> displayed. I don't know, but I would say so. The notion of local symmetries of a distribution has its infin infinitesimal ver version, a vector field Y on a manifold is an infinitesimal symmetry mm -hmm. of a distribution if and only if uh, uh, Lie bracket of this vector field with all vectors in the distribution belong to the distribution. Given two infinitesimal symmetries, their commutator is also infinitesimal symmetry and the set of all infinitesimal symmetries of D naturally has the structure of a Lie algebra. This Lie algebra is called the symmetry algebra of the distribution. Uh, the local Lie group uh, and the Lie algebra of the distribution are closely related. In, in particular, for every value of the real parameter T, the flow of an infinitesimal symmetry is a local diffeomorphism of M, and it forms one parameter subgroup in the local symmetry group, right? 
We illustrate uh, the notion of an infinitesimal symmetry of a distribution by the following example in five dimensions. So I have a five, that's my favorite example always. So there is this five dimensional R5 with coordinates X, Y, P, Q, Z. And now I have rank two distribution spanned over smooth functions on R5 by the following two vector fields. And now since we, since the, we, we just can calculate commutators X3, which is the commutator with X1, X2 is linearly independent at each point with X1, X2, and then X4, which is X1, X3 is still independent, X5. So we have this, and it's clear, clearly a regular bracket generating distribution with a cross vector 2, 3, 5. And we have the following theorem of Eli Cartan and Friedrich Engel. I always should stress that it is also of Engel. Uh, and this cartan Engel theorem that the symmetry algebra of the distribution, uh, which I just uh, described on the previous slide, is 14 dimensional split, split real form of the exceptional simple Lie algebra G2. And it can be spun, you can calculate, you can, you can really, with, with this, with this, with this, uh, um, uh, representation or with this of, of this distribution, one can solve these symmetry equations that was on the previous slide about this y that should that should uh, commutators of y with x1 and x2 should stay in D and can solve these equations. Actually, Maple solves these, these equations immediately. And you will you, you can see that there are these 14 vector fields on these five. R5 that that have uh, sim that that span a symmetry algebra of G2. So here, the, 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 if you look at this or this uh, this expressions here, you see that that they are cubic in these coordinates, right? So this reflect. Because it was. Really, if you if you if you if you look at the papers which are simultaneously published in the same journal, which is Comptoir in 1893, there is first paper of Cartan, and then immediately after there is paper of Engel, and they are talking about. Actually, Engel says more than Cartan because Engel gives gives representation of both G two, both five dimensional realizations of G two as a as this uh, realization as of, of G2 asymmetric group of this 235 distribution, but he also gives a representation of this G2 as a symmetric group of this G2 five dimensional contact structure. So Engel puts, Cartan also says something about this, but Engel does it much more explicit. And moreover, I would say that Engel is particular hero of mine because Engel in, 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 he, in his paper, he even when he, when he, when he writes about this this uh, 235 distribution this flat 235 distribution he even writes a <laughs> conformal 23 signature metric for this distribution so he he really introduces this metric that that some time ago i i, I got in in in, in non-flat case but 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 the flat case metric is in the angle paper and is in the same journal essentially on the same page that the cartan's paper <clears throat> So, if I just made this 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 uh, example of this two three five distribution with this G two symmetry, so since this is bracket generating distribution, and I was saying that bracket gener generating distributions should naturally appear as some as some uh, mechanical systems with uh, velocity constraints. So, <clears throat> a question immediate a question is here: Does there exist an holonomic mechanical system? Whose configuration space is equipped with the velocity distribution locally or globally, even equivalent to the Cartan angle, angle distribution? And we know some answers about this. The, 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 the first one came from really from Robert Bryant, but but I today I would be I, I would like to be much more much more specific because I would like to ask if such a realization of such mechanical system can be obtained as a mechanical system on the plane of, on, of only points or lines which are moving in the plane. Okay. So that's my question. <clears throat> so, 
So additional geometric ingre ingredients. Continuing the example of the skate blade kinematics, we recall that the skate blade configuration space is locally R2, R2 times S1, with this coordinates, coordinates X, Y, alpha. The velocity distribution is contact and is defined as the annihilator of the contact form. So this is the explicitly, this distribution is spanned by two vector fields, X1 and X2. Uh, and note that the skate blade velocity distribution is a contact distribution does not have finite dimensional symmetry algebra because it's simply contact distribution. So you would say that there is no much geometry with this, with this uh, skate blade geometry because it's simply a three dimensional manifold with contact distribution, which doesn't have any, any invariance. Right? But uh, thinking about the skate blade physics, one can understand that we did not capture all geometry of the skate blade configuration space yet. The skater uses two particular moves when skating. He, or even she, uses straight line sliding. And this is done by moving along the direction of the vector field X1, which is just the direction along, along, the, along, the, uh, along the blade. And he, he or she can also make spinnings or pirouettes. And this is done by moving along the direction of the vector fields del, del, delta alpha. So he can either go this, and these this, this operations for a, for a skater are, uh, he absolutely is aware that there is, there is this one and this one. So, so this distribution has additional structure, meaning that this, <coughs> this uh, contact distribution has a split onto two vector subspaces or two, or, or two rank one distributions spanned by these distinguished directions, right? Also, I mean, it's not just, uh, I would say that uh, it is probably for beginner professional skater. Yes, professional skater uses the contact structure, but if uh, maybe I was on a skate blade once in my life, and I practiced only this, this D1 distribution so far. Anyhow, <clears throat> anyhow, I simply want to say that, that there is more than, than just a contact, contact, contact distribution on the skate blade uh, configuration space. It's actually a contact distribution with the split. So this, of course, leads to the following definition. And this definition is related to this, what Joel was talking today. So we, we define a two M plus one dimensional manifold with a contact distribution. And we will call it a para CR structure if this distribution splits onto two sub distributions where the distributions D1 and D2, each of the same rank are integrable. So in particular, like in this skate blade, there was one dimensional, so they were integrable, right? So again, a 2M plus one dimensional manifold M with a contact distribution D is called a para CR structure if D splits onto D equal D1 plus D2, where the distributions D1 and D2, each of the same rank are integrable. Note that, note that although D1 and D2 are integrable, distribution D is not. As we remember, it is annihilator of a non-degenerate con contact one form. So the equivalence relation between two para CR structures and their symmetries are defined similarly into the equivalence of distributions. For the equivalence, one needs a deformorphy such that it not only uh, tra transforms distribution, the distribution contact distribution to itself, but also preserves the split, right? So this, of course, implies that the, if, if I only assume this what is here, this, of course, implies that this thing uh, uh, preserves D as well. Similarly, an infinitesimal symmetry of a para CR structure is a vector field that preserves D1 and D2. Also, one has the notion of a local group or Lie algebra of symmetries here for, for the CR manifold, right? Uh, given two bracket generating distributions of the same rank, on an n-dimensional manifold, when one asks about their equivalence, the interesting story begins with where n equals to five and k equal to two. The simplest class of n uh, of the of the gross vector two three five distribution do uh, has 
local invariants. So this class of two, three, five distributions have has local has has local invariants. There are locally there are locally non-equivalent two, three, five distributions. The most symmetric of them being locally equivalent to the Cartan angle distribution with split G two symmetry algebra. If the distribution D has an additional structure such as para CR split or other algebraic properties such as, for example, being a symmetry that this distribution is a symmetric tensorial power of some vector bundle S, then the local non-equivalences can occur in lower ends than five. So as I said, the, the geometry of distribution of naked distributions starts to be interesting from, 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 from uh, dimension five, but if there is some additional structure on the distribution, there are already interesting cases in lower dimensions than five. In particular, although three-dimensional contact distributions are all locally equivalent, there are locally non-equivalent three-dimensional parasial structures. It further follows that the most symmetric of the three-dimensional parasial structures is um, such structure whose Lie algebra of local symmetries is SL3R. So the, among these three-dimensional contact distributions, uh, which are just parasial structures, the most symmetric one has symmetry uh, SL3R, isomorphic to SL3R, which is eight dimensional Lie algebra. We already observed that the configuration space of the skate blades is naturally equipped with the contact distribution, which is the blade's velocity distribution. And we also observed that this D has a natural split onto D1 plus D2, where D1 is the straight light sliding space and D2 is the spinning space. In our new language, the geometry of the skate blade kinematics is the geometry of a three-dimensional parasial manifold. Also, as we already said, the three-dimensional parasial structures have local invariants. There are locally non-equivalent structures of this sort. And there is the most symmetric one among all of them with the algebra of symmetries being as large as SL3R. So how to characterize the three-dimensional parasial structure of the configuration space of the skate blade? And here is the theorem, the symmetry algebra of the parasial structure on the configuration space of the skate blaze is isomorphic to SL3R. So it is the most symmetric one. And again, one can just solve these equations finding the generators in these coordinates that I, that I, that I uh, uh, introduced before. And that this story is SL3R symmetric is actually obvious without any calculations because since to define our skate blade, I only used the notions of a line, of a point, the tangency, and the incident relation of point of a point being on a line, then the structure is, ob is obviously SL3R. What, what would be interesting here if the structure was larger, but it's not. It is. That's it. Okay. Okay, so it's. So, so, so. Yes, yes. So we go, so this this geometry is appearing in various contexts. This this geometry appears, for example, in the context of 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 um, ODEs of second order ODEs considered modulo modulo uh, point transformation of variables. So it is also the flat model for 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 for, for equation. Take the chance. Uh, like y double prime equals zero. And then you, you transfer back to this. Anyhow, but this is the also geometry of no, the, of the in, skate. In terms of a skater. Okay. So as I said, that, that this is that this is that this is true is, is, is sort of obvious. And here I just uh, since I was asked to make an elementary talk, so some people okay, I know that most of the people in this audience know all of this what I said so far. But I hope that there is at least one that not know everything. So, so in particular, uh, I know that since I have a physics physics background, so I was I was this 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 story of of, of structural theory of 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 Lie algebras was not known to me at least during my physics studies. So I say to my physicist friends that you can you can you can you can uh, describe. Uh, somehow invariantly uh, these uh, simple algebras in terms of 
in terms of uh, root diagrams. And these root diagrams are very useful in, in just trying to see if there is some homogeneous distribution on, on the corresponding group. And uh, what, what this root diagram tells you here, there are the, 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 these are root diagram of SL3R, and this SL3R is eight dimensional. Uh, it is, it is uh, rank, rank two, simple the algebra. So these two uh, generators, let's say, that, that, that corresponds to this rank, these are two points in the middle, and the six others are just maybe represented as, as, as okay, might, one may think about them as, as, as uh, uh, six independent generators of, of this Lie algebra. And this root diagram has this nice property that, 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 that you can view commuta commutators here of the, of the, of the uh, uh, generators of the Lie algebra. By, by these vectors and the commutators is addition of these vectors. And only if, the, if the, the, the commutators between vectors generating here, this algebra are non-vanishing, only if the, if the, if the sum uh, of uh, the two vectors here, so the, this geometric sum on the plane is in the diagram, okay? So, for example, for example, then uh, you you can you can for example see that these 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 uh, orange roots uh, with the red root and with the two roots in the Lie algebra uh, form <coughs> form uh, in, in in the Cartan Cartan uh, subalgebra form uh, subalgebra. So there is a five-dimensional subalgebra here. Uh, and in the in the group level, there is there is this SL3R, and there is this five-dimensional subgroup there corresponding to this to this red and 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 uh, and orange roots with with the with the two points in the in the in the Cartan subalgebra. So if you just you can you can pass to the quotient to the homogeneous space of the group by this five-dimensional subalgebra. What you get you get three-dimensional homogeneous space. And it's 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 uh, a tangent space at every point is equipped with sort of like uh, it can be identified with 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 the quotient of the Lie algebra SL three R by via, by this five dimensional subalgebra. So in a, in a in a way you see that in the tangent space of every point point there are these two blue vectors. When, whose commutator is the third vector, and it shows you that that this is just this this two distribution, which is the blue vectors correspond to the two distribution in the in the in the in the tangent space of this homogeneous space, and this two distribution is con contact because the commutator is given by this represented by this by this blue vector, and and this alpha ten and alpha eleven blue guys give this split in the distribution, so you can see everything. Everything from in the in the in the diagram. So somehow, therefore, you can think about this about this uh, skate blade geometry as as it is essentially the same geometry that you have a homogeneous space of SL three R divided by this five dimensional subgroup, which is happens to be parabolic subgroup. Okay. So now, if you uh, my my question was about G two. So here you can you can you can you can compare the SL three diagram to the to the G2 uh, root diagram. So somehow you have to add the long roots. So SL3R sits somehow in this, in this, in this, in this, in this G2. So somehow here you immediately see this, this Cartan angle distribution. The Cartan angle distribution now is just uh, so this everything which is which is starting from, from the uh, gray roots to the left form a nine dimensional subalgebra in this 14 dimensional Lie algebra. So there is the, 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 there is a G2 divided by this nine dimensional subalgebra is a five dimensional homogeneous manifold. And on this manifold, there is two distributions spanned by the blue vectors. And the commutator of these blue vectors is the third green vector. But now if you, so this, so it's two, this thing is free, then this blue with, with green, Makes yellow, blue with green makes yellow, which is two three five. So this is two three five distribution. SL three in G two is not unique, uh, is it? Say it again. 
Yes. SL3 in G2 is not unique. Yes, it's not unique. No. Yes. But how many there are different? You mean how many with respect to what? With respect to action of what? To, to symmetry of G2. So, to automorphism of G2. I think that there are three. Three really non equivalent. Okay. Okay, so that's that's so let, let me come back to my to, to, to my repeat I repeat my question. Can we realize G2 as a symmetry of a mechanical and autonomic system on the plane? By this I mean that the velocity constraint should be imposed on points, lines contained in the plane. To realize such a system, its configuration space should be minimum five-dimensional. The maximal dimension of the proper subgroups in G2 is nine. So it is known that the the the, the if, if, if there is a subgroup in G2 uh, of dimensions higher than nine, it is G2 itself. So somehow the, 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 the proper subgroup in G2, the highest one, it, it has dimension nine. So the minimal dimension of a homogeneous space, which is homogeneous with respect to the G, G2, should be five, right? So somehow if I want to solve my question, I need to find a system whose configuration space is five dimensional. Right. So since a point on the plane has two coordinates, we need a minimum number of three moving points, right? Because I cannot make five out of two points. But if you accept points and lines, you allow you can you can you can try to you can try to play with points and lines or some uh, but more, maybe also more complicated, more, more complicated objects. But I am I am simple. I try to do with something simplest possible. Can I do? How much time I have? Very good. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so so uh, uh, let me let me. So I said I need at least three points. So what can I do with three points? Consider a mechanical mechanical system of three ants. So I think that about these points as ants on the on the floor. So I have ants on the floor, and these ants are stupid ants. They are just playing a game. There are two games that they can they can play. Either they they move according to rule A. So rule A forces them to move in such a way that velocity of any given ant should always point at an ant which is neighboring to her. So it is how, how on this picture, there's one ant here and here and here, and they are chasing each other all the time, right? There could be another game, maybe more sophisticated. I was thinking that it's the same. Uh, I, I look at my picture, okay? Look at my picture. I, I, I think about this that they should do it like this, okay? But but there is there is better rule actually. I, I like this other rule, which I was thinking that is just the same, but it's it, it's not. So so now I want that the that every ant is moving at every moment has velocity directed. In the same direction, which is parallel to the direction of the uh, that is defined by the other two ants. So this ant goes in this direction because it is parallel to the line given by this ant. This ant goes in this direction because it's parallel to the to the line defined by this ant. So I can play such things. This is this is definitely some restriction of on, on, on velocity, and actually it is linear restriction, so it should. So the, the 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 how much time I have? The the, the configuration space is here six dimensional, and there are some velocity constraints. And I see three velocity constraints in rule A and three velocity constraints in rule B, uh, rule B. Both of them are linear, so there should be some rank free distribution in dimension six, I think, right? So let, let's let's let's. So as since since Jan says that I have no time, it's even better because I essentially. And finished. In the next lecture, we will observe that rule A equips the six dimensional configuration space of the ants with a structure of a homogeneous pre six distribution. So this is expected. It was just six, six, uh, uh, six dimensional space, rank free distribution. This distribution, this pre six distribution, this, the, 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 the distributions with the uh, the gross vector three six are 
essentially generic. So it was expecting that will be like that. What was not expecting to me, because I was thinking it is the same, that, that rule B, B is the same as rule A. Stupid. I, I was just fooled by, by, by physics that there is this always this dual construction. If you have something, if you, if you see a triangle, you see also the other triangle. So the, the, in the other rule, we will see that rule B actually foliates the six dimensional configuration space onto five dimensional leaves. And on this five dimensional, so, 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 so essentially the ants will be, will be confined into, into these five manifolds. So the movement will be on, on five manifolds. And on these five manifolds, there will be free distribution. So there will be pre five distribution, which makes everything more interesting. So I will tell you about this next time. Say it again. Uh, how do you see it? You would say today. <laughs> okay, I will not say anything more. Yeah, so I think this is a very beautiful and all the first EBA lecture, and we can be looking forward for the next one tomorrow. Getting the details and thanks, Pavel, for the talk. Seven minutes for questions. So, please, who dares? <laughs> no questions. Maybe someone from Tromsø. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Very, very silently. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's better. Okay. Yeah. Hmm? Let's Let's Sit on the chair. Oh, okay. No, no. Um, uh, just curious about the. Um, so for the three six case, do you have any isotropy in that case? What do you mean? Do you have a stable non-trivial stabilizer in that case? Is it is it simply transitive or is it multiply transitive? Uh, I uh, okay. You see that the. You, 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 first of all, first of all, first of all, the three six case is obvious because because how how did I define this three six case? In this three six case, I didn't use any structure only points and lines so this is definitely sl3r symmetric right so you see that there is that there is sl3r symmetry immediately this, so this system the this system is sl3 asymmetric but yeah. 36 distribution has 20 the the, the the flat one has 21 symmetry 20, 21 dimensional group of symmetries because it is uh, i don't know locally it is so 34 so 34 the, the flat model so it is 21 dimensional uh, flat uh, the, the the symmetry of the flat model is 21. I see here immediately that it has eight symmetries, and these are actually the same eight symmetries, the, the same Lie algebra as for this skate blade. The question is if it is higher. I don't want to answer your question because I will answer it tomorrow. <laughs> you can work it out as homework, meanwhile. Then. Yes. So maybe I have a yes. nice question. There is a microphone here. Uh, did you study three dimensional configuration like instead of taking three points on a plane take like three uh, four points in a, in a space i did yeah but i like to be on a plane i have a suggestion on a plane making rule b uh, that every ant uh, uh, the velocity of every one uh, has angle Theta parameter uh, with, uh, with respect to the line uh, defined that's, that's by, a, by the other two. That's a good idea, and I was also doing this, and the answer is quite so maybe not surprising, but I will also not tell you. Are you? <laughs> I, have a, I have a lot of sleepless, you know the, the, I have a lot of sleepless nights, the, the, and the, I do. In this theory of uh, well, intrusive five distribution, somehow the number three appears. Mysterically, so I wouldn't be surprised if for theta 30 degrees uh, you have for something planned. I will tell you privately, or <laughs> this is a lecture, you see, it's, like... it's not uh, a it... research talk. Uh, before you um, introduce the power CR structures, you mentioned that something of the geometry was missing didn't really get that, so could you elaborate a bit more on that? 
what's it, what should I do? You were referring to para CR structure and some details were not understood. So it's right. So what this this I the, everything what I said I can ex explain again because it's easy. So we should go back to para CR pl place here, right? Uh, yeah. So I was wondering what sort of the purpose of the the structure was in like the skate plate case. So I, I introduced this para CR because it's it's really geometry. The, when M is equal one, that's precisely the geometry of this skate blade. And because in the skate blade you have this 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 split of the contact distribution, and here is the notion which is just working in any dimension. And this is a nice geometry because this geometry is parabolic geometry in any M greater than or equal to one. So somehow it is interesting geometry on its own, and it has also another real form, which is which is CR geometry, which is actually more, even more. So maybe, maybe uh, like higher dimension of CR, you can interpret it as some higher dimensional skate plate. <laughs> no, the, the, I I didn't talk today about a car because I already talked to these people about the car. I didn't talk to yeah. these people about these ants. So yeah. car car is also something like this. Uh, so maybe my question is sort of, how does this structure help us understand the scale rate case? Like maybe on the previous slide? Uh, previous slide, here. Yeah. yeah. So I, I so we, 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 had, we had in the skater, we had uh, that's the geometry of the skater. This like naked, like very skillful ska skater, according to Professor Zhitomirsky, is a guy that only sees the contact structure. But a skater that is just learning to skate, he just learns moves, simple moves. And the simple move is just to go straight on along the blade. And this just gives this additional structure in the splitting of this distribution. This distribution D here is rank two, but I claim that the direction X1 is well defined at least by a skater and the, the, the direction X2 is also well defined. So it, this, there is a natural physical split of this, of this distribution which makes it into para, three dimensional para CR structure. Not, not only contact structure, but it's actually para CR structure. Okay, yeah, I see. Thanks. So I think we have we have used all our time devoted to, very to this very lecture. So thanks, thanks Pavel again.